this is the MSI Mag Core Liquid 360R V2. Um, the actual one's not actually in the box, it's been in my system, and I've been using it for about six months now, um, several hours, probably on average every day. So it's got constant use uh, during that time. Now we're gonna take a look at the performance of this and how it stood up over that time. And normally this wouldn't be uh, that interesting, but with the issues with the first version, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there wondering if MSI has actually corrected that issue and if the V2 is actually uh, pulling its weight. Uh, now, if you're not aware of the issues with the first version um, and the recall, check out the video that I'm just going to post up here somewhere. And the short of it is, there was sediment building up in the uh, in the coolant, and that sediment would build up and would start causing the um, the actual water pump to be less efficient and then gaming or anything that was causing you well even base like not doing anything uh, the temperature would be very high and then during gaming or anything that would put any kind of load on the CPU would then cause the temperatures to skyrocket and then cause your CPU to thermal throttle. This also applies to the 240R so any of the core liquid 240R 360R I'm not sure if there's a 120 uh, or not, but they all had that same problem uh, with the liquid for the first version, and they came out with the V2 uh, afterwards. Now, there is a recall for both versions, but that only applies to certain serial numbers. Uh, there is a uh, website that you can go to, uh, and, uh, it's in that video that I posted earlier. You can go to that, that website, put in the serial number, and figure out if your version is under recall. Uh, you might be experiencing problems, you might not be experiencing problems, but uh, the way the recall works is they will actually send this to you first, and it'll have a shipping label and the box that it came in. You just take your old one out, put the new one in, ship your old one back, you're, uh, you're not out anything, there's no downtime on your PC. If you are having issues with your uh, with your V1 and it's not under the recall well you have to go through the normal RMA process which could be kind of a pain because you have to send your AIO back to MSI they have to look at it and then determine if they're going to cover it replace it fix it whatever it is and then your PC is not going to have any kind of cooling solution during that time so either you don't use it have a backup or you have to buy a new one which that's that kind of defeats the purpose. Uh, but they have expanded it over time, so if it didn't, if it wasn't covered before, it might be covered now, so it doesn't hurt to give it another try and put in your serial number. I know there's been quite the uproar. I've seen it um, on other YouTube channels talking about it, so it does seem to be a pretty big deal. And uh, it's kind of put a uh, sour taste in people's mouths when it comes to MSI products, not necessarily their motherboards, but their AIO for sure. Comparing the two units, the first version to the second unit when they were side by side, um, I do have another video that I can post right here where I did the initial unboxing and uh, my first uh, uh, impressions of it. Comparing them side by side, nothing looked different. Uh, as far as I can tell, I think the only thing they did was the internal changes to fix the coolant and whatever else was breaking down to cause the sediment to build up. And as far as the V2, it does come with an LGA 1700 socket. So if you have one of the newer models of uh, Intel CPUs, uh, it does come with that. Uh, now let's check the results out. Testing how well an AAO can cool your CPU under extreme circumstances requires putting a max load on the CPU for an extended period of time. Doing this is gonna let you the coolant in the AAO to warm up and then stress test how well the pump can move the coolant around and how well the radiator can, radiator can then cool it. Uh, right here I'm using Cinebench R23 as it's capable of engaging all the cores at their maximum frequency which is 4.4 gigahertz on 12 cores uh, for the 5900X. Uh, here is a recording that I did so I could walk away from the computer but I'm 22 minutes in 22 minutes into a 30 minute run. And as you can see, all the cores are being engaged. They're at their max all core frequency of 4.4 uh, gigahertz. And the temps are sitting at a comfortable 79.6 degrees Celsius with a max obtained at some point in time of 
degrees. Now, per AMD, you can expect temperatures of the Zen 3 CPUs to reach between 90 and 95 degrees Celsius under a full load. So here, under extreme temperature, uh, extreme conditions, uh, we're comfortably sitting 10 degrees below that amount. Now, comparing this result, the results here uh, to the ones obtained when I first tried, or when I first did my uh, review, uh, back then the temperature is sitting about one degree lower. Uh, I would say that based on this, it's still operating uh, at the same capacity as it is as it was brand new. I'm several games into playing Halo Infinite, and as you can see, the temps are hovering around 60, 61 degrees, which is fairly cool, and it's using about 66, 65% um, more CPU utilization. So it's more of a realistic load that would be on the CPU and can the, you know, testing if the AO can handle cooling that. And as you can see, it definitely can at 60 degrees. So let's move on and check out Cyberpunk 2077 and see how it holds up there. Now in Cyberpunk 2077, the CPU temperatures are slightly higher at 64 degrees and CPU utilization is at 58, 57, hovering near the 60 degree mark. Again, well below the 90 degree limit that AMD has put out for these types of CPUs. So all in all, currently the uh, AO is doing a good job of keeping the temps cool. Here's a quick snapshot from six months ago of me playing Far Cry 6. I looked through the video to pick out the highest temp that I could find. At one point in time, it hit 70 degrees at 45% uh, utilization. This is a snapshot of Halo Infinite and it's sitting at around 66 degrees, which is higher than what we saw before, but I was playing the multiplayer game in the video and in this snapshot, I'm just playing the uh, the campaign. But all in all, um, the temperatures are comparable to six months ago, which again, I guess the biggest concern would be, did MSI fix the problem? And I'm assuming they did because the temperatures that I'm seeing, there's like, there's no skyrocketing temperatures. We're not hitting 90 degrees. We're not seeing any thermal throttling. All the temperatures are, well, under load, we're sitting at 80 with Cinebench R23. And while gaming, we're sitting at under 70 degrees, which is well below uh, any limit uh, on the CPU. Now, is this the best cooler out there? God, no, it's not. However, it if you can get it on sale, which I did, and that's the main reason why I got it, it's doing its job. It's keeping the temperatures uh, well below any kind of thermal throttle limit that might be achieved. Using my S22, this is the sound that uh, it's picking up from my PC. And as you can tell, the, well, all you can really hear is the fans, and it's not as loud as the cell phone is actually making it up to be. That cell phone video really isn't doing it justice to how quiet the AO is, because this is next to my head all the time, and the only thing I ever hear are the fans, and they're really not that loud. Um, if I would have had this next to my feet or a little further away, I practically wouldn't even be able to hear it. So as far as audio goes, it's very quiet. Now on the important topic is, did MSI correct the problem that the first version had? And it seems that they did, uh, at least with regards to the one that I have, there hasn't been any issue. Temperatures are fairly low. Uh, are they perfect? No, there's better coolers out there, but those ones cost more. For what I paid for this was like 125 Canadian, which would probably be less than 100 US dollars with three RGB fans and all that good stuff. Uh, it was a pretty good deal and it's working six months later as I would expect it. It's still working the same as when I first installed it. Now is longevity, is this going to last me years? Who knows? MSI really isn't, uh, I don't think have been in the game that long compared to some of the other ones, but we'll see. Time will tell. Uh, again, something does happen to it for a hundred bucks. Uh, it's been pretty good so far. Anyway, if you have found this content useful, please like and subscribe to my channel. And if you have any comments, please leave them down below. Thanks. Bye.